Well, praise the Lord. We're so thankful for you tuning in with us on another Friday. We want to say God bless you. And we're just honored and privileged just to have you tune in here at Sebastian Mitchell Ministries. Listen, we're going to have prayer and we're going to jump right into the word. Amen. So Amen. we just want to pray. Father, we thank you for your goodness, your kindness, your mercy. We thank you, Father, for your dear son, Jesus, whoever lives, who makes intercession for us. Thank you, Father, for the Holy Spirit, being our teacher, being our God, giving us revelation truths. I pray that all hindering spirits in the atmosphere be checked and bound, and we loose the Spirit of God. I pray, Father, that you think to my mind, speak to these lips of clay, give revelation knowledge to your people, set the captives free on tonight, release miracles tonight. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Glory be to God. So um, we're, we're in the month of December and um, we're coming out the close of 2021. And it's been a phenomenal year. You know, we just came out of a, a huge pandemic and we're closing out. You know, other, other uh, viruses are trying to get loose, but we take authority and we're binding those viruses and uh, those sicknesses. And we just thank God that we're moving forward. 2022 is just around the corner here, and um, we're excited about it. You know, our theme has been, it's time for miracles. If ever there's been a time for miracles, this is the time now, right now, for miracles. And I want you to set your faith and your spirit and your mind in agreement with me to believe for your miracle or miracles. See, I can say you, you can have receive a miracle or you can receive miracles. It can be ongoing. It don't have to just be one. You can get another one and another one and another one. So let's get into the word. If you're taking notes tonight, um, I got uh, get some pencil and paper there with you and your Bible. We're going to jump right into it. And um, we got some filet mignon tonight. If you're not excited about that, we got some T-bone steak tonight. That don't move you? Okay. We got some bone-in ribeye tonight in this word. And we're just going <laughs> to dig right into it. It's going to be a great meal. And I'm confident it's going to bless you. So I wrote a time for miracles. And then I sent you out. It's time to receive a miracle. But tonight, I got another subtitle for the subtitle. Is that okay? And I have how to receive your miracle. Then I added this. 10 faith action steps you take today. Not next week. Not 5th of November. But today. We want to get that thing going today, right? Yes. So um, I put a note here. When we're dealing with miracles, don't be a spectator. Be a participator. You know, uh, when I was younger, and uh, I did a lot of partying when I was a young man, a lot of partying. And I was never the one to be a wallflower. You folks know what a wallflower is? You know, stand up against the wall, hold the walls up. No, no. I wanted to be right there on that dance floor, enjoying myself. And I enjoyed myself. So I, I would find folks who come off the wall and start joining in. Folks who were shy about dancing, they'll get some confidence and come on out there and, and saw me having a good time. They'll join in and have a good time too. Listen, in this walk of faith, I don't want you to be a spectator. Who God is good. Well, how do you know? Who God do miracles. How do you know? Are they operating in your life? That's a thousand dollar question there. Are they operating in your life? You want, you want these miracles to take place in your life. You want God to place his super upon your natural. Um, why don't everybody, if you have one on, if you got a religious coat on, just unbutton that thing because we're going to take that thing off tonight. Glory be to God. Because we're not going by what Big Mom and them talked about or what Ray have talked about uh, 20 years ago, we're talking about 10 action steps for you to take to receive your miracle tonight. 
at least get on the road for it, right? You know, if you if you want to go down to uh, Mississippi, you want to know at least which way to go. What, what's the direction do I go? You know, you can't go hit Mississippi headed towards Wisconsin if you're in Illinois. You got to go south. So I want to point you in the right direction to get you on track to receive what God has for you. And uh, I'm going to give you some scripture. Everything is scripture based. So we're going to dive right into it. First step, I believe, you need to worship the Lord every morning. Every morning. Your, your, your lips ought to crack and, and give God some praise. Give him some thanksgiving. Give him some some hallelujah, some, some thank you, Lord, for waking me up. This is the day the Lord has made. In this day, I'm going to rejoice. I wrote here uh, the book of Psalms, if you have uh, your Bible, Psalms 34 and 1. We're going to give you uh, some scriptures with each bullet point. That's Psalms, the 34th chapter, and the first verse. This is what it says. This is David talking here. He says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Key word. Now, if you own the Bible that you're reading, just take you a highlighter or a pen or pencil, whatever you use to write, um, and kind of highlight that word continually. Continually. Because praising God has to be a continual thing. It has to be continuous to come out of your mouth. You, you, you got to always give him some thanksgiving. Always give him some praise. Because he deserves all the glory, all the honor, all the adoration. And look, this ain't no con game we working here. This ain't, uh, let me say something good to you today and get what I need because I don't need you tomorrow. No, that's not that. We need the Lord how many days? Every day. So we ought to have a praise every day. The Bible says, offer up a, a praise of thanksgiving. We ought to offer up God a praise of thanksgiving. Even a thank you, Lord. A thank you, Lord. He woke you up. Know this. A lot of people didn't wake up today. A lot of people didn't wake up today. Matter of fact, we're going to take our praise and we're going to give God 30 seconds of praise just by saying, thank you, Lord. Thank, thank you, Lord, you, for waking us up this thank morning. You. Thank, thank you, you for all of your goodness. Thank you for all of your kindness. Thank, thank you, you, you for all your tender mercies. Thank you, thank you Father, for your word says that you, grace you, and mercy shall follow thank me you. all the days of my life. Thank you, Lord. Thank your word thank says thank you. you loadeth us daily with benefits. And for God, for that, I give you the praise. I thank you, Father. Wake me up. I, I have my right mind. I have the activities of my limb. I got the faculties of my body. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. Not for what you've done, but for who you are. Who you are. And we give you the praise for it. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. So we want to get the in a mode and a habit of giving God thanks and praise, opening our lips and and use them for praise and honoring God. Amen. Glory be to God. Number two, the second bulletin here. Make a list. Now you ready for this? I want you to make a list of forgiveness. This is called your forgiveness list. Forgiveness list. I never heard of that. I know you have. Let's go to uh, the book of Mark, the eleventh chapter. Mark the eleventh chapter. Mark the eleventh chapter. And the 25th verse. Here we are. Listen to this. 
this is when the Bible speaks about a forgiving spirit is required. And when you stand praying, forgive. If you have anything against any, that your father also who is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. Listen, it goes like this, y'all. You want God to forgive you of the mm -hmm. things you've done. Yes. You, you gotta you gotta you gotta forgive them folks. Well say, hey, Sebastian, you don't know what they did to me. Yeah, you're right. I don't know. But I'm looking at Mark, the 11th chapter, 24th verse says this. Therefore, now what is it there for? It's there for this to say unto you, whatever things ye desire. Was it, no, 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 I apologize. Verse 25. And when you stand praying. Forgive. That was a big custom in their day, days of Jesus. Um, they stood praying. I submit to you, even the uh, Pharisees and the Sadducees, um, they had a habit about 12 noon when the, uh, the sun was out. Uh, those Pharisees would go out there with their beautiful robes uh, that sparkled and shine, and they wanted the sun to hit it, and they would just amaze the people. They looked at all holy, holy. Uh, it was special effects, y'all. That's before they had smoke machines and uh, LED lights. They used the sun. They used it on the garment. So people had a custom of standing. And Jesus said, when you come standing for prayer, forgive. If you have anything against any, can I say it again? Forgive. That your father also who is in heaven may for what? Give you of your trespasses. Yeah. You want to be forgiven. You got to forgive. Yeah. You may say, hey, Sebastian, I hear you, doc. It sounds good, preacher. But let me say this. You don't know what I've been through. He molested me. He divorced me. He left me with all these kids. He is my business partner. I trusted him. And he stole the money. And then the business went flat. I hear all what you're saying. And I can empathize with what you're saying. But the Bible says if you want forgiveness, you're going to have to show some forgiveness. I, listen, I said what? I said, make a forgiveness list. I don't care if it happened 30 years ago. Get a list and, and, and put some folks' names down there who you know you ain't forgave. You know you haven't forgot, you've forgiven them folks. Uncle Billy. Write Uncle Billy's name down there. Big Mama. Get Big Mama name down there. Your boss. Get his name in the book. Your wife, your child, your spouse, your husband, get the name in the book. Whoever you can think of that you haven't forgiven, make a list. You can make it a list. Now you got making a visual and a mental picture. And you walk through it like this. You know, I'll just throw a name. Uncle John, you know what you did to me wasn't right. You stole my innocence as a kid. Messed me up. But I chose, I'm choosing today to forgive you. Now, Uncle John may be dead, but that unforgiveness has hindered me in life. I'm releasing you and I'm forgiving you of all that you did for me or all that you've done to me. I apologize. I release you. I forgive you. There's a, there's a power that comes with forgiveness. There's a supernatural strength comes when forgiveness takes place. Because I believe at the moment that you forgive, God says, ah, now I can forgive you. Because you got some junk in your trunk. There's some things in your closet that can't stay locked forever. You know he knows. You need to repent of it. 
give it up. Now, I know repent. A lot of people say, well, repent means uh, turn turn away from it. Tur turn it around. I, I got another definition for you on, on, on repent. Repentance or rep to repent means, now listen to this. I changed my mind. You have authority. You have control of your mind. Choose to change it. I I'm not going to hold you in unforgiveness no more. I'm not going to do that no more. I, I, I repent. I'm stopping. And I'm choosing to change my mind about that situation. I'm not going there no more. That woman ain't my wife. I'm not showing up over there two o'clock in the morning. I changed my mind. I'm not gonna steal extra hours off the job. I changed my mind. I'm not gonna hold folks in unforgiveness. Why? Because I changed my mind. So make a list of folks who you haven't forgiven. You ain't gotta share it to me. With me, you don't have to email it over. Just keep it in your own private little uh, uh, home with you. And you write it down and start forgiving those folks one by one and forgive them from here, from your heart. Your heart's your inner being, in your spirit, in your soul. When you start forgiving them, mark them off. Go to the next one. Forgive them and let them go. Man, that a preach that let me forgive them and let them go. That'll preach. Verse number three, my, my third bulletin here. Listen to this. Sharpen your listening skills. I'll repeat that. Sharpen your listening skills. We have all can do that a little more. I'm talking about that inner ear. Yeah, that still small voice. Uh, Romans 8.14, let's go there. Let's go to Romans, that's, that's the New Testament, the eighth chapter and the 14th verse. I got 10 bullets, and if you're a good class tonight, we can, we can get through it tonight. Um, 8.10. Is that what I got? Eight, Romans 8.14, I apologize. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You have the Spirit of God in you? Listen to his voice. Listen. Get quiet. Listen. He's your father. If he's your father and you're his child, what father doesn't speak to his child? What child doesn't want to hear from his father? I submit to you tonight, whatever you're going through, say, well, I just don't understand. In prayer, let's not just be speed and spit. Lord, give me, 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 give me. Lord, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. I say this, I make my wife laugh. Uh, uh, some of my children, uh, one in particular, she has a song. Now, my children are um, very religious, some of them. Uh, they celebrate Palm Sunday. Daddy can I have, daddy can I get. Daddy can I have, daddy can I get. Daddy can I have, daddy can I get. Daddy, 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 daddy can I have, can I have, can I get. You always see the palm of their hands out. But let's take out some time and reverence God Let's not give them all our demands, all our, just throw all our demands to them, what I want, what I want you to do for me. When you're first going to prayer, first let's go into uh, Thanksgiving. Let's do that first. And then after you've made your petitions and you've thanked him for it, get quiet because he has something he likes to say to you. So what I want to do, I want to, I want to steal myself. I want to steal my, my, my spirit. Why? So I can hear the voice of God. I got to hear from him. 
got to hear from. Man, if I don't hear from him, I don't know what to do. I need him to lead me. I need him to guide me. I need him to show me which way to go. So I got to get quiet. So I can hear from him. Once I hear from him, the answer solved. So he'll lead me. He'll guide you. He'll show you what to do, when to do it, where to go, and when to get there. If you can get quiet and listen out for him. Amen. Lord be to God. The fourth bullet. We're moving pretty good here tonight. Now, this is, this is I, I, I live by this, y'all. This is a rule. Only speak the language of faith. Now, I can stay there a long time, but I won't. But only speak the language of faith. Um, I got a bullet for that. I got a good bullet for that. Um, I'm, I'm hearing the voice of God, so uh, I'm going to come back to that bullet. We're going to go over here to the Old Testament. I'm listening, and I'm here. Um, let's see here. We're going to go to Numbers, the 13th chapter. Thank you, Lord. And the 30th verse. Now, this is after Moses heard from God and he spoke to 12 leaders from each from a tribe of uh, Judah or Jacob. So uh, 12, 12 tribes of Israel, which was of Jacob. Uh, and each uh, tribe had a representative that was chosen. Great man, I'm sure, no doubt, hands down, one of the greatest of their of the tribe. Well, they were sent on a recon mission to go down to uh, Kadesh Barnea, over to Canaan land, to see if the land was what God said it was. That's all. Now, if they had Polaroid camera or some type of iPhone, they could probably just take a picture. You know, God would say, just go over there and take a picture. But they didn't have iPhones or Polaroids then. So what they did, they brought back proof. And the proof was the land flowed with milk and honey. They had grapes and fruit so large, they had to run a stave or a staff through it, a long stick, and one man was on one side and another man was on the other side just to carry the fruit back home. Wow. Just to carry the fruit back home, they had to run a stake through it to carry this fruit. That's how heavy it was. And this is the proof. But um, some men, some of the leaders, they got shaken up because there was a giant to the lamb. And let me just tell you, that to read their testimony. So they're talking to Moses and Aaron. And uh, I'm going to start the 26th verse. I'm going to give it a little speed here. Uh, and they went and came to Moses and to Aaron, that was his brother, and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. So these leaders coming back and they're showing the people uh, the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, we came unto the land to which thou sentest us, Moses, and surely it flowed with milk and honey and this is the fruit of it. So everything's going good. So far, they're talking faith. But then they slip into doubt and unbelief. Verse 28 says, Nevertheless, the people are strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled up and very great. Um, and moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. I know. The Amalekites dwell in the land. They, they were there of Negev. And the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. Oh, yeah. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea, by the edge of Jordan. 
So 10 of the 12 uh, leaders was given what? A negative report. They were sharing doubt and unbelief. They were uh, preaching, but they were preaching fear unto the congregation. Here come the words of faith here. And verse number 30. I'm in Numbers 13 to 30. This is what Caleb said. The Bible says, and Caleb stilled the people before Moses. I don't know if he clapped his hands. Hey, get your mind right. And he said, listen, Moses, I don't know what my man talking about. I was at the same place he was at. Don't listen to what he's talking about. Listen to me. Let us go up at once and possess it. For we are well able to overcome it. Those words of faith. Hey, stop all the doubt and unbelief. Let's just go get the goodies. God gave us a land of milk and honey. Let's go now. Fear came in, destroyed the whole thing. And those people, do you know those leaders had to pay for that doubt? Do you know that they had to pay for those words of unbelief? You know they had to pay for that negative report. This is how serious it is. Let me say this. If you don't get nothing else out of this class tonight, please hear this. God, according to, when I look at this word, when I look at this word, this is what I see. God hates doubt and unbelief. Hate it. Why? Can you prove it? Of course. These men who gave that report, they died and their children went over to the other side. God is saying, listen, I let you see it. You touched it, you felt it, but you won't enjoy it. You put fear and, and doubt and unbelief in my people's heart. I'm gonna remove you off the scene. Hey, you back there, his children, you guys gonna go. So these men died. Only ones who, who survived was Joshua and Caleb. Only two. Then Joshua ended up taking the place of Moses. I have another scripture for you in the New Testament. I get, got a second witness for you. And that's going to be found in the book of Mark, you know, 11th chapter. You know, I love the book of Mark, full of faith. Let me see here. Yeah. Mark the 11th chapter and 23. If you allow me, let's go out, entertain me tonight. Let's do verse 22nd too. Let's start at 22. It says this. And Jesus answering saith unto them, key words, have faith in God. Thank you, Jesus. For verily I say unto you, whoever shall say, Unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. That's good news. So, whatever the situation is, don't get into fear. Sorry, um, Sebastian, can you repeat that? Sure, I can. Um, the verse that I'm tying to this, the scripture I'm tying into for the fourth bullet point, only speak the language of faith. I yes. gave you numbers, the uh, 13th chapter. I believe I started at the 26th verse through the 30th verse. And now we're in Mark. Mark, the 11th chapter. 11th 20th chapter and verse 22. Yes. And 23. Yes. So we're speaking faith. Yes. Regardless what the negative report is, we're speaking faith. So only speak faith language. You can be faced against hard obstacles. We're going to touch this in another bullet, but you can get a bad report. Oh, I'm sorry, your, your credit don't look good enough to get this house. Oh, I'm sorry, you need another credit point uh, to get this car. Don't get into doubt. Only believe. Speak to the mountain. You see, 
we as human beings, even Christians, even baptized believers, we don't have a, a problem talking. We're talking about a whole lot of things. But what you're speaking to, not speaking about. Exactly. Come out of the realm of uh, getting involved in other people matters and their affairs. Stay in your lane. Stay right here in your lane. Keep your hand on your wheel. Um, just, just stay right where you at and keep going forward. Okay. Don't look back. Just move forward and stay in your lane. Okay. Pray for them over there and pray for them over there. But you got to keep moving forward. Amen? Amen. We only speak a language of faith. Now, um, I don't want this next bullet. I don't want to seem um, like I'm, I'm speaking dogma or anything like that. Or uh, like we're going to make God do anything. That's right. not my case. It's not, right. it's, not, it's not that. So please allow me to explain it. That's why I got scriptures tied to each bullet. So now we're on the fifth bullet. Okay. Now, and, and, and listen, I'm a trained salesman. But please hear me on this. This is a blessing. Don't take no for an answer. Yeah. Don't take no for an answer. Don't accept the bad response. That's what I'm saying. Well, what bullet point you have for that? I'm glad you asked. We're still in the new, we're still in the New Testament. We're gonna make a right turn. We're gonna go up the road a little bit and we're going to go to 2 Corinthians. And we're not gonna go far. We're gonna go into the first chapter. Because I'm a the Bible says prove all things. I'm gonna prove God's word to you. If you follow these bullet points and read them and get involved with them on a daily basis, you're going to see a change in your life. I assure you that. I assure you that. Listen, 2 Corinthians, the first chapter, and the 20th verse. You're going to say, I, you may say, I didn't even know that was in the Bible, but you're going to read it for yourself. If you got a highlighter, highlight it. It says this, for all the promises of God in him are yea and in him amen unto the glory of God. Praise God. When it comes down to his promises, God only understands one thing. Yes. Can you make that a little clear? I sure can. I'm glad you asked. So God, will you heal me? I need to be healed, God. Will you heal me? What do God says? Yes. How do you know that? You go to Isaiah. No, where we at? Second Corinthians. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go to. We're gonna go up the street to, on Second Corinthians. You can go to Second Peter, the second chapter. I apologize. The first. Is that first? First Peter. I apologize. Yeah. First Peter, the second chapter, the 24th verse. Will God heal me? The answer is yes. How do you know? Because his word says, who, this is Peter talking now. You know, Peter was his right-hand man. You would think Peter know what he's talking about, right? This Peter who pulled out the sword. This Peter who threw the net on the other side of the boat. This Peter who was down there cussing denying Jesus Christ three times. This Peter, who went back fishing, went back to his old job. This Peter, when he saw Jesus walking up after his resurrection, come off the shore, he was naked, jumped into the water, swam to his master. And Jesus said to him, Peter, if you love me, do you love me? Yes, Lord, feed my sheep. That's that Peter. Who his own self, my God, man, he's speaking from experience, y'all. He know what he's talking about. Bore our sins in his own body 
on the tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. By whose stripes ye were healed. That's New Testament. I gave you 1 Peter, the second chapter, the 24th verse. Write that down. Now, for you biblical scholars out there, they do I, you got more? I got more for you. We're going to go to uh, Isaiah. That's Old Testament. We're going to go to the 53rd chapter. I'm just going to, it's four, the, you can write the fourth and the fifth verse, but I'm just going to read the fifth verse. You can write the fourth and the fifth verse. Give the description of them. Well, let me just do it. I'll do the fourth and fifth verse. Surely, this Isaiah, the eagle-eyed prophet, who could prophesy, he seeing thousands of years uh, beyond his generation. Thousands of years. He's seeing Jesus. He says this. Surely, truly, truly, it's the truth, y'all. He hath borne our griefs. He didn't stop there. And carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. He looked the weak on that cross. He looked powerless on that cross. He didn't look victorious on that cross. But this is the fifth verse says. But he, I submit to you that he was Jesus, was, past tense, was wounded for our transgressions. He was, past tense, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of or for our peace was upon him. The peace of God was on him. And with his stripes, we are healed. And we're going to have a little Bible class right here. You know, I get serious about sickness and disease. I don't tolerate that garbage. That don't belong to the child of God. It says, but he was, past tense. He was wounded. Past tense. He was bruised. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we, our present time, was, we are, we are, we are, present. We was, he was wounded, he was bruised, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and that same him, with his stripes, we are present time, present tense healed. Now let me let me open up a picture, paint a picture for you. I'm not talking about Hallmark. You know, it's Christmas season. You go down to Walgreens, you go down to CVS, wherever they sell Christmas cards at. Um, you may see a Christian program, and the person who's portraying Jesus, you may uh, see a couple of stripes on his back. Um, out of all the pictorials I've seen, I think Mel Gibson, The Passion of Christ, far, bar none, the best uh, depiction I've seen done on cinema, the best I've seen. But yet and still, yet and still, is no comparison to what actually happened to Jesus. I, um, I've had the luxury uh, to meet and talk with Jim Cavill. He portrayed Jesus in the Passion Play. And um, he gave a testimony that for this scene, they had the guys who portrayed the Romans, they wanted to get it as real as possible. And 
Um, they had a a a, a cat. A, a, a cat a Montgomery, help me with the term. Cat of nine tails. Cat of nine tails, where the Romans they studied torture. They were experts at it. And at the end of that 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 leather strap, they would take bone and broken glass and weave it up in there. That when they crack that whip and it hits you and they pull it out, it snaps flesh from your body. Now you might have read uh, 39 stripes in the Bible. Oh, 39 stripes. That was the law. 39 stripes is in the Bible. 39 stripes did happen. But 39 stripes was the Jewish punishment. If the Jews, like they had, uh, when they got uh, the uh, Apostle Paul, when you read, Apostle Paul said, I was uh, beat 39 stripes, less one. Because they felt if they go over that, you know, they broke the law. And they didn't use that cat of nine tails. They used just a leather strap and they tighten you up real good. With Jesus, it was torture. And they beat him unmercifully. They tore his back to shreds. You couldn't recognize it. Blood was everywhere. His intestines is coming out his back. He just looked like mutilated meat pulverized and I submit to you tonight that those stripes you can picture that horrible scene the blood the gore of all that stripes on his back your name was tattooed in those stripes he took a stripe for you why? He knew you was going to need healing. He did it for you. That's why by his stripes, we are healed for the suffering that he endured for mankind. That's a good place to give God some praise. That's a good place to give God some praise. So when the devil's trying to come with you with sickness and disease, you give him back this word and let him know no, sir, I will not take that COVID-19 virus. You keep it yourself, sir. I'm healed by his stripes. I'm healed. You keep your sickness. You keep your disease. I choose. I got a choice in the matter. I choose to be healed. Well, Sebastian, I, I got the I, I got a cough. <clears throat> you may get the cough, but you hold on to the word. You see, there's a difference between facts and the truth. It could be a fact that a sickness or disease, disease, which is a dis-ease to your body, may be actually in your body detected by medical science. So the doctor can look up and say, oh yes, we see here um, that you have such and so-and-so. We ran your blood work and this part is okay, but we do see this here. Say, thank you, Mr. Doctor. Appreciate it. They may subscribe you some medicine. Um, you go with that, but then you take this other medicine, this Bible here. Um, they're giving out free vaccines. God's giving out free vaccines too. this word. And you get this word of God of healing in your mouth and you say it and you say it and you say it and you mutter it and you ponder it and you think upon it. What are you doing? Let's go back to last month's teaching on the laws of meditation. It's going to go into your conscious mind, which is up here. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. As it leaves your conscious mind, it's going down to the next level where the heart is. Another term uh, for heart, for the heart, that's going to be your subconscious mind. That's where your believing station is located what you are and what you're not, what you believe and what you don't believe. That's where you want the word of God to get to. You want to get it down there. And you want, and, and if you meditate it, like Joshua said in the first chapter and eighth verse, you meditate day and night. You meditate day and night. Something's going to happen. 
something super is going to come upon your natural. And since I'm on this, I just like to say, don't wait till the last minute. When, the, when you get a doctor report and it's negative, man, beforehand, get this word in you. That's why Joshua said, man, get it in you day and night. Observe to do it day and night. Day and, Joshua, yeah, I hear you, Holy Spirit. I said, make a note, Joshua, because this is going to help somebody tonight. Joshua, the first chapter, the eighth verse. If you want something to manifest in your life, you need to meditate the word of God. This is what Joshua, the first chapter, eighth verse says. Um, well, I'm going to say what uh, God said to Moses, uh, to Joshua, on verse seven. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or from the left that thou mayest what? Prosper wherever thou goest. So you have the keys for your prosperity. You got the power if you prosper or not. In any way you want to prosper in your health, prosper in your finance, prosper in your family, prosper in your business, prosper in your ministry, you got the power. Apply this law. It says this, verse 8. This book of the law, talking about the word of God, shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do. Somebody say to do. To do. According to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. See, see how God turned the ball into your court? And then thou shall have good success. The ball is in your court. So I just want to have that, uh, give that to you. So if you're taking notes, uh, you can have some extra ar artillery in your arsenal. Um, I got to pick up the pace here a little bit. I just got kind of excited right there. Uh, we're on bullet point number six, which ties into, uh, which ties into Numbers, the 13th chapter. I'm think, I think the Lord leading me there. Write this down, this bullet point. Refuse to doubt. I'm gonna say that one again. You won't you I'm gonna give you 10 actions, 10 faith action steps to your miracle. Yeah. Say, well, I've had a miracle before, Sebastian. Well, I'm giving you 10 action steps to your next miracle. Yeah. yeah. And it says, I wrote here, refuse to doubt. I'm going to give you the scripture, but let me just say it. Don't be afraid. Just believe. Yeah. We're going to go over to Mark, the fifth chapter, in the 36th verse. Yeah, Mark 5, 36. Listen, the Bible says, now this is after uh, J. Iris, uh, dealing with the young lady uh he he brought her daughter uh back to life verse number 36 says as soon as jesus heard the word that was spoken he said unto the ruler of the synagogue be not afraid only believe be not afraid only believe now this fifth chapter in the book of mark this will blow your mind. This is loaded. It's pregnant with miracles. If you want a miracle, thank you, Lord. I, I, I'm hearing this. Yeah, I, I'll say this. You looking for a miracle? You want to get on the fast track of a miracle? You really got to get faith-filled words? It's 43 verses in the fifth chapter. Read this chapter for 21 days and come back and tell me what happened. Yeah, reach out to me, Sebastian Mitchell Ministries at Facebook or um, Sebastian Mitchell Ministries at gmail.com. Read this chapter, the fifth chapter for 21 days and then come back and tell me what happened in your life. Is loaded with miracles. Listen, 
Jay Iris, who was a, a, a priest, a high priest in the temple, in the synagogue, his daughter died. He's going to Jesus. Jesus! Jesus! Have mercy upon me. Jesus! What is it? What is it? My daughter, Jesus. She's dying. I'll come pray for her. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Now Jesus is turning towards Jairus' house. Now as he's turning, the whole multitude is in flow with him. As he's going to follow behind Jairus, this woman with the issue of blood, who's had this issue of blood for 12 years, who the Bible says she gave all that she had to the physicians. So Rush, uh, you name your favorite hospitals, Northwestern, Michael Reese, Mercy, the county, they all got her money. And you want to hear my opinion on it? I believe they all ran game on her. I believe they. I believe that the, that hemorrhaging of blood, they knew they couldn't do anything about it. So what they do? They do what a lot of doctors do today. They take this three times a day and come back and see me. Amen. Sure do. Yeah. Yeah. Take this medicine and come back and see me. And the Bible says she took the medicine. Use cab. The Bible says the. I, I don't know. They didn't say she took the medicine, but the Bible says this. I said she took the medicine because she wanted to be healed. But this is what the Bible says. And she grew worse. Amen. And the Bible says she spent all that she had. All. Listen, sometimes we've done all that we can do. And I had a coach that says, said, you say this. All you could do is all you can do. And all you can do is enough. She ain't got the money no more. I, I believe she was rich and famous. They probably knew who she was when she walked through the doors. Yeah, let's, let's get this bag out of her. Ooh. Now she got this disease. She's hemorrhaging. The Jews are ca calling this on her, Montgomery. Unclean! Unclean! Now she got to hide. She got to go into hiding. She can't be around her family members no more. Wow. She got to be on the outskirts. They got a special town for the folks with leprosy and all these diseases. But she must have been in the market, probably in the back alleys trying to find food. And the Bible says she heard. I'm about to get excited about Jesus. Somebody, somebody was publishing his name the way Luke speaks about it. They published his name. And she... She just heard. Well, don't that line up with the Bible? The Bible says, now faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Well, John, the first chapter and the first verse says, in the beginning was the word and the word was God. The word in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And then the 14th verse says, and the word became flesh. There was Jesus, and she heard about him. Here it is. She's in a desperate situation. Please, Jesus, don't ask me for no money. Is Jesus asked for no money? No, he ain't asking for no money. He don't want no my PPO? No, he don't need no PPO. He don't need no about my HMO? No, he don't need that. No, he, don't, he ain't asked about that. He doing it for free? He's a healer. I'm telling you. He, I, 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 he's, he's laying hands. He just laid hands over here. He's laying hands over there. And the Bible says she mustered up enough strength. And then she said to herself, she started speaking faith words, y'all. I believe that's on one of the bullets. Can't you see it on the ground? Dust is kicking up, <coughs> dust in her face. <coughs> oh, and she said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I could be whole. He had, fr he had fringes on that. And that's what the uh the rabbis wore. That's what I mean by the hem of his garment. And she just touched one of them hem, them, them, them fringes on that hem. To the point, watch this, watch this. Jesus is on Jairus heels. She's on the she's on the ground crawling, coming behind him because she heard about him. She touched him. Then Jesus stops. 
Hey, slow down, Jay Iris. Somebody touch me. Oh, here you go again. Oh, uh, you know, Peter, James, John, Bartholomew, Judas. Here we go again. Somebody touch me. One of his followers said, Jesus, all these folks? Yeah, somebody touched you. He said, no, Pete, I ain't talking about that kind of touch. <laughs> somebody took something from me. My, my anointing is, is, is off a little bit. Virtue is out of me. The virtue I had is gone. Somebody got some. There she was, y'all. Can't you see a ball up in the corner? Shaking, scared, knowing of all people she shouldn't touch, especially not a rabbi. There she is. And she was healed. Jesus said, go, my daughter. You've been healed. Your faith. Hmm. Your faith has made you whole. But what was that step? She heard. She heard. Faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So refuse to doubt. Number seven. It ties into what she did. Don't just sit there, do something. Don't just sit there, do something. Follow these instructions I gave you tonight. Pick up your Bible, open it up. Say what God said about you. You didn't already heard what, what the doctor said. You didn't heard what Ray Ray, Pookie and them, your auntie, your auntie, big mama, you didn't heard all that. Why not hear what God has to say about the matter? Let's bring him in on the conversation. Let's turn to James, the second chapter and the 26th verse, New Testament. Now, you got to know James knows something. This is the one who sat at the breakfast table with Jesus. He just saw me, oh, that's just my brother. Oh, he picked up a trade like my dad. Oh, he's just a carpenter. Until later down the road, he found out, man, my brother was the real deal. He was the Messiah, or he is the Messiah. This is what James says. The second chapter, neither James. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Make a correction here. James, the second chapter, the 20th verse says this. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? You want to do something from God? You got to do something. You got to do something. Something. Remember the blind man? There was a blind man who's crying out for Jesus. Jesus, once again, they call out for Jesus, man. Jesus! Jesus! You can see his armor bears in the way. Man, what you want? Are, are, you, are you Jesus? No, I'm not Jesus. Jesus! Jesus, get a hold of him. Man, what, what you want? Jesus, I want my sight. He stayed claim to it. I want what's mine. Son of David, I want what's mine. My sight, it belongs to me. The devil can't have, he didn't have it long enough. I heard there was a healer. You're the healer, you Jesus? I want my sight. Jesus spit on the ground, made some clay, took it, and rubbed it to the man's eyes. Now, don't you, none of you preachers out there go try that. Because you got some big armor bears on the ground, so you, it may be a fight up in that camp. But the man, Jesus put the mud in his eyes, right? Then Jesus said, go wash your eyes out. You, go wash your eyes. The man went over there and washed it out. Now he can see. I'm just saying, wherever there's an action, there has to be a reaction. There's cause and effect. You got a part to play too. That's why I was talking about meditating this word and getting this word in your mouth and pray the word, confess the word. And we have other teachings on that. We'll get that out to you to help you with that. Number eight. This is a good one here, y'all. Plant the word of God. 
You got to plant it. What you mean, plant the word of God? How you how how plant the word? I go outside my backyard and take my Bible and bury my Bible in the ground. No, I'm not planting. The, we ain't doing that kind of. We ain't doing that one. Let's go to uh, Luke eight eleven. We're gonna wrap this thing up, y'all. Luke the eighth chapter eleven verse. Then I got another verse for you. I'm gonna build you up in faith tonight. When I finish with you tonight, you're gonna be biting on some lead and spitting bullets tonight. Man, I'm telling you, you're going to go out and do something, slap a monkey or slap a gorilla, do something. <laughs> uh, Luke 8 and 11. Listen to this. Now, Jesus said this is the grandfather teacher, but I'm only going to verse 11 only for right here. Now, the parable is this. This is what Jesus said. I better not do that, Lord. Yes, sir. Okay, I'll do, what you, I, I do it that way. I'm going to the fifth verse. I do that, y'all, when I hear the Lord speaking in my spirit. I talk out loud sometimes. Um, let's go to fifth. Uh, let's go to uh, eight and five first. Then we're going to speak it out in verse eleven. This verse five when he's speaking to the multitude. Verse eleven when he's speaking to his boys. Verse five is in the public. Verse eleven is in the VIP room. Okay. <laughs> The verse five said, a sower went out to sow his seed and he sowed some fell by the wayside and some uh, was trod down the fowls of the air devoured it. But the, 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 the meaning here is verse five, a sower went out to sow his seed. A farmer went out to sow his seed. That's what farmers do. The sower went out to sow his seed. Verse number 11 says this, because you're the farmer. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Where are you planted at? In the ground? I thought you said I'm not going to my backyard. Plus, it's cold outside, Sebastian. I'm not talking about that ground. What ground are you talking about? Your heart. Remember earlier when I said you say it, faith come by hearing him by the word of God? You want to say it? You want to say it? So it's up here in your conscience. I'm saying, I believe I received my healing. 1 Peter 2.24, by his stripes, I was healed. You're saying it here. It's in your conscious mind. You're meditating it. You're saying it day and night. You're saying it day and night. Now it's going down. Where? Into your heart. The subconscious mind. Now it's in your spirit. You do that enough, you're going to see your healing. You know what I'm talking about, y'all? You're going to you meditate this enough, you'll see it. Whatever you want, there's a seed for it. Whatever you need, God's word got a seed for it. You got to believe it. I told you to begin this broadcast. Take your religious clothes off at the door. We only talking faith over here. Take that garment and put it in the in the garbage. Look, what has it done for you thus far? Ain't done nothing for you thus far. Give it up. All those religious little ideas. And all those, and I'm not coming against your denomination, your pastor, your reverend, none of that. I'm just saying, we done tried everything else. Why not try God's word? You done tried everything else? Try this. So, you're saying it. You're playing the word in your heart. Uh, I said I had another scripture, and that is Mark, the fourth chapter, and the 14th verse. I'm picking up speed now. That's Mark 4, 14. And I'm going to read it. He's teaching the same thing. And he said this. The sower soweth the word. The sower soweth the word. Let me tell you something. I truly believe this. This is the key to miracles. This here, that's the key to miracles. It's key to it. Uh, okay. Verse number nine. Uh, bullet point number nine. Uh, what I put here? Oh, yeah. You got to learn this. Learn the art of waiting. Huh? Yeah. Learn the art form of waiting. Waiting is an art form. What I put here in my notes. 
Uh, I put Hebrews 6 and 12. That's what I put in my notes. I'm going to say that, then I'm going to say something else. Hebrews 6 and 12. Who brew? The Hebrews. Chuckle, chuckle, yuck, yuck. Hebrews 6 and 12. It says that ye be not slowful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. So don't be slowful uh, of, of others. But this is what it says. It says uh, that you uh, that you be not slowful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Uh, I wrote a note here. I wrote what it says follow, uh, followers. I put here. I put a circle around. I wrote this as a note. Copy, duplicate, imitate. Mm -hmm. Copy, imitate, duplicate. This is what is Apostle Paul 10? said. Apostle is Paul says this. Follow me as I follow Christ. Don't just follow me as Paul. No, no. I ain't no God. I ain't got a heaven or hell to put you in. But follow me as I follow him. So we want to we want to uh, duplicate, imitate. We want to copy, duplicate, and imitate. We want to be like him. Is that number 10? That's number nine. Number nine. Oh, here come number 10, Montgomery. Something good is about to happen. Oh, yeah. If you're driving, you may want to pull over to the side of the road and keep that seatbelt on. I'm coming for you. First, we're gonna this is the last one bullet. We're gonna turn over there. We're gonna get in the we're gonna get in the on the block right there in the neighborhood with it. Then I'm going to say it. We're going to go to Mark, the ninth chapter, and the 23rd verse. This is so, this so good here, man. This is what I wrote. This is what I want you to do. Some folks jumped off too early. But this is what I want. This is for the faithful. This is for the folks who really want a miracle. Expect the impossible. Why? All things are possible to him that believe. It. So now we're at uh, Mark, the ninth chapter, 20 verse, 23rd verse. This is what Jesus said. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. I hear you, Lord. I'm going to do it. If thou canst believe, all things are possible him that believes. Trina, if thou can believe, block everybody else out, Trina. You put blinders on, Trina. I got it. Gotcha. You believe. I believe. Vinny, you online? If thou canst believe. Baby, you upstairs, you hearing me? If thou canst believe. Slow. You, if thou canst believe, that next promotion is yours. Block everybody else out. We used to do something when we was kids. We were too old to do it as teenagers, Montgomery. Uh, down there, growing up on Fifty First Street, Fifty Third. <laughs> um, but when we were uh, not even at diet, I'm going back down to the days of John Hope and Willard. Wow, I'm talking about, huh? We we come out the we we some low end boys, y'all. We come out the low end. We used to do something real silly. Don't this made it sound gross to you? Sometimes the girls were doing real serious. The girl, the girls was was real serious. They'd lick their finger. Mm, mm, and they're putting their ear. And you try to say to them the girls, they want to hear it. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> and you try to say something to them, girl, that's why you stink. Mm, mm, Mm -hmm. That's why your mama welfare. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. That's why you got a buck teeth. Mm-hmm. That's why you can't get none of this candy. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Nappy. Mm-hmm. No matter what you said, when we were a kid, we'd take that figure, put in our ears, and block you out. If thou canst believe, look here. Now, we're gonna take a look. We're gonna take at least two minutes with this. I want you to put your, if you write notes, just write this note. All things are possible for me. Put your name in there if I believe it. What is a quarter million dollar salary? If thou canst believe it. What is that next promotion? If thou canst believe it. What is your, you you starting your own business. You sign the checks. If thou canst believe it. What is your child going to college debt free? If thou canst believe. What is that sickness, that disease leaving your body entirely? If thou canst believe. See, Jesus rolled the ball right to your front door. Jesus said, I'm not asking about your reverend. I ain't asking you about what Reb said. I'm not asking you about your friends or your neighbors, what their opinion is. Ain't got nothing, this, this ain't got nothing to do with them. This is a you situation. If you can believe it, then you can receive it. It all hinges on your belief system. What are you What are you saying? What are you listening to on a daily basis? You listen to doubt, unbelief. You may have to lick your fingers, stick them in your ears. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can't listen to that garbage. Look, it ain't got them nowhere. You know it ain't gonna get you nowhere. I hope and I pray that I said something tonight to stir up your faith. That you can look at these notes and look at these uh, these bullet points and say, you know what? I believe I can do this. I believe this is doable. I'm going to get up in the morning and I'm going to praise God for waking me up. I'm going to open my mouth and I'm going to say something. Then I'm going to go to that list that I wrote and I'm going to forgive these folks. I'm going to start. I can't, I can't do them all at once. I got about, it's a lot of them. But I'm going to start marking their name off one by one and forgiving them. What am I doing? I'm cleaning my heart. I'm throwing out the trash. Then number three, I'm going to sharpen my listening skills. I'm going to listen out for God. And when I hear from him, I'm going to do what he tell me to do. Then I'm going to start speaking the language of faith. I'm going to pick up me a new language. And I'm not picking up Chinese. I'm not picking up Spanish. I'm not picking up French. I'm picking up the language of faith. I'm going to get me some faith-filled words. And I'm going to fill my mouth with it. And I'm going to say it over my life. That's what I'm going to do. And number five, um, I'm not taking no for an answer. I'm going to receive what God got for me. All this good stuff God got here. The Bible says all the promises of God are yea and amen. The Bible says that he loadeth us daily. Daily? With benefits? Oh, yeah. I ain't taking no for an answer. I'm getting my next. I'm getting me a new house. I'm getting me a better car. I'm living, I'm living somewhere better. Well, it, well, well, it didn't come out the ground. They didn't build out the ground. Well, your house is, is 10 years old. Well, it's new to me. It's 20 years old. Well, it's new to me. That car, that's five years old. It's new to me. Number six, I'm going to refuse to doubt. Others done it. I'm going to believe it can happen for me too. Number seven, I'm not going to just sit here by the wayside. I'm going to go do something. The Bible talked about some lepers. They said, if we stay here, we'll die. Let's go over to the enemy's camp and see what we can do over there. And then they came into the best of things. The best garments, the best food. It was so much, they had to share it with others. 
Don't just sit there on the lump. Then next, number eight, plant the word. Plant the word of God. I'm become a sower. I'm take this word and I'm gonna plant into my spirit. I'm gonna plant the word of God into my heart and I'm gonna watch God grow great things out of my life. He's gonna use me as a tree and I'll be like Psalms 1, 1 through verse 1 and 3. I'll be like Psalm, I'm gonna be a Psalms 1, 1, 3 man. The first chapter, the first verse of 3. I'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth my leaves in my season. That God's gonna do great and mighty things with my life. Praise God. Then I'm gonna learn how to wait. I'm gonna wait like a servant waits on a on a on a table patiently. I'm not gonna sit around and just wait and do nothing. I'm gonna wait and I'm listening for God. I'm wait with patience. The Bible said, with faith and patience, I receive the promise. And verse number 10. I'm expecting impossible. I'm going to believe that something supernatural is going to happen for me. I'm going to believe that something good is going to happen for me. Yeah. Every day I'm expecting. What did it happen? It didn't happen yesterday. Well, I'm believing for today. What did it happen Friday? Well, I'm believing for Saturday. What did it happen Saturday? Well, I'm believing for Sunday. Why? I ain't dying until something good happened for me. Why? I'm holding on to his promise. And all the promises of God are yea and amen. Listen, I pray we bless you tonight. I pray this word is, is germinating in your spirit right now. As I'm speaking, what am I doing? I'm sowing that word into you. Don't let it sow into bad ground. Don't hear it today and don't listen to it tomorrow. Go back over those notes. Listen to it again and again. And again, I got great news. I got great news. Next week is going to be Christmas Eve. Are we having class? Yes. Well, what if you can't make it? Great. What? Because by next weekend, Christmas Eve, we're looking to launch our YouTube page. Awesome. We'll have a YouTube Amen. channel that you could come and subscribe, tune in, share, like, thumbs up, hearts, all the above, and we can further advance the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 Before you leave tonight, I don't know if someone's out there sitting out there like me at one time, back June 1st, 1986, I remember like yesterday, I came to a church, I wasn't saved. Matter of fact, I was around the corner from my friends um, going to meet a young lady. And I uh, stopped in this church. My heart was not right. And I knew it. I didn't even need to turn. I already knew it. The man said, uh, who want to be baptized? And folks were looking around. And I just stood up. I knew I needed to be baptized. I got baptized. And... Um, uh, the preacher said, well, young man, we have a service tonight. And he told me to come back at 7.30. I came back. I was sitting on the front row. And then went in the back with me. And uh, that night, I received God into my life. And I received the Holy Ghost, his comforter, his spirit. That was back June 1st, 1986. I'll, I'll never forget it. I can tell you what I ate that day. I can tell you what I was wearing. I can tell you what, hair, what hairstyle I had back when I had hair. And if that's you tonight... I'd like to lead you to the Lord. Say, man, I, I, I heard this sermon. I heard this teaching tonight. Man, it was, it was a blessing. But I need him. The reason some things haven't been working right in my life, Sebastian, the Lord's not in my life. I'm a good person. Well, friend, you're at the right place at the right time. We're headed towards a new year. Let's take the Lord along with us. If that's you, I'm going to say a prayer and I'm going to actually just repeat it with me. Is that all right? Repeat after me. Dear Father, Dear Father I come to you now to in the you precious now. name of Jesus. Name of Father, Jesus. I'm aware of my sins. I know I'm a sinner and I've fallen from your grace. But Father, I ask right now, just as you ask me to forgive, 
Father, please forgive me of all my sins, all my trespasses. Wash me that I may be white as snow, as though my sins be as scarlet red. Wash me that I may be white as snow. Receive me into your kingdom as I receive Jesus Christ into my heart. Now, Satan, this is a warning. I don't belong to you. I'm not your servant. I deny you and all your wicked ways. You may try to bring them back to my remembrance, but they've been forgiven and washed and placed in the sea of forgetfulness. Thank you, Jesus, for receiving me into your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If you prayed that prayer, we'd love to follow up with you. You can reach out to us at Sebastian Mitchell Ministries at gmail.com. You have our phone number. You can reach out to us through there. You can reach out to us through Facebook, Sebastian Mitchell Ministries at facebook.com. Listen, we love to stay in touch with you, pray with you, encourage you, push you, and see you at the top. Listen, it's been a wonderful evening spending the night with you tonight and sharing the word of God. We're about to sign off. And we just like to say that, remember this, that the just shall live by faith. God bless you. We'll see you next week. You be blessed. And keep remembering, walk by faith, not by sight. Bless Amen. you. Amen. God bless Amen. you.